I am proud to say that I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. I love this city. I love this city because of the people of the city. Uh, we have the greatest neighborhoods. The people that make up those neighborhoods are just so colorful, right? It's interesting. You got north side, you got south side. You got the neighborhood that I grew up in that I want to talk about tonight, the Strip District. Yes, yeah, I'm a little biased, and I think, yeah, to me, that's just the most colorful neighbor, neighborhood in this city. I think it's like the heart of the city to me, the Strip District. It, it's like uh, 12 blocks along the Allegheny River, right, where all the wholesale goes on. If you want, you know, seafood, you go to Woolies, right? You want toys, you go to Feinbergs. It's got everything there, everything you could imagine. And, and growing up there in the 60s and the 70s, was just fascinating. We, we had a big family, actually. We covered three of those 12 blocks. <laughs> we did. My grandmother had like eight kids, great grandma had eight kids, and I was an only child, but I had a big family. I had like 16 cousins, you name it. It was a huge, huge family grew up in those three blocks. And my, my grandmother, who was the matriarchal figure of the family, she was a devout Catholic. I mean, heavy duty. You know, rosaries, holy cards, New saints like other people, new baseball players, you know. She's... <laughs> and part of the rite of passage in our family was, was my mom and my grandma. My grandma wanted every male to be an altar boy. Yeah. Everybody had to be an altar boy. Because I, I think she secretly thought one of us in the family were going to fulfill her dream <laughs> to become a priest. She wanted a priest. And she was over for 16. <laughs> I mean, everyone tried, you know, Uncle Johnny, Uncle Ed, Cousin Joey, Uncle Yossel. <laughs> but Uncle Yossel, he almost made it. He actually had papers for seminary school, but he didn't do it. So at nine years old, it was my turn to be an altar boy, and I was like her last hope. This was big for her. So, so I'll never forget the day, and I'll, you, you have to, to become an altar boy, that you have, you have to go through like a dress rehearsal. I didn't know this at the time. We, like, we lived on 12th, 13th, and 14th Street. 14th Street was where St. Patrick's Chapel was, and that's where I was going to have my first mass. The entire family was going to be there, and the entire neighborhood, so I was excited. So you have to have like a, a little dress rehearsal before you become an altar boy, because there's things to do. So I'll never forget that day that my grandmother and my mom brought me into church for my rehearsal to be an altar boy. Nine years old. Very shy, by the way. Painfully shy. So shy. Other kids wanted to be like a policeman or a fireman. I, I wanted to be a mine. <laughs> we played hide and seek. Hide was my thing. I love that. <laughs> Painfully shy. So being out in front of people was going to be, you know, unbelievable for me as an altar boy. Nine years old. This is traumatic. So there we walked into St. Patrick's, and, and I remember standing up in the back of the church, and I walk in, there's my mom, there's grandma, and on the altar, waiting for me, is our priest in, in uh, there, it's Father Galli. Nice guy, to described him, he, he was about five feet tall. He looked like Andy Warhol. He looked like a chumpier version. With wire room glasses, Andy Warhol hair, that kind of thing. Not intimidating, because he was only five feet. I was, what, three and a half, so not too bad. And there are none. Uh, to his right, to my left, uh, Sister Mary Charles Bronson. <laughs> Not her name. It's really Sister Nunciata, but we called her Sister Mary Charles Bronson for years. She looked just like Charles Bronson. I swear to God. I mean, I'm talking like little mustache, you know. I'm that Bronson face, you know that. I mean, I'm Mr. Majestic Charles Bronson, Death Witch Charles Bronson, you know. And, and Nettie Rue was there, the, the, the church manager. And, and, and there he was, uh, uh, about four feet tall, crew cut, piercing blue eyes, my best buddy at the time, and still one of my best buddies today. All star altar boy, and my partner, Ken Oldensky. That's right. Altar boys, you, you go in pairs. You have, you have buddies. It's like Starsky and Hutch or something. It's, it's a pair. <laughs> Kenny was my partner. And I was kind of relieved, because I knew Kenny was a legend in the neighborhood already at 10. He's a year older than I. <laughs> but he was an all-star. He had like 100 matches under his belt. <laughs> 28 novenas. 14 funerals. At 
ten. <laughs> he used to brag about it too. You know, you know, he told me too, Jim, if you do a good job, uh, Father will give you a quarter after Mass. So I'm excited about this, right? Even though I'm nervous, I'm afraid. I'm like, you know, pay for pray. I'm in. Because <laughs> in 1969, they gave a lot of candy at Kramer's, you know, I could get you like, you know, milk duds and juju beans, a whole box each. I don't want to screw it up. There's a quarter involved here, I guess. So they're, they're going through their introductions, everything, they're going through a whole thing of the mass. There's a lot of stuff going on. But I'm following It's like, you know, okay, Jim, here, you'll ring the bell. I, I, I can do the bell. I need it. I can do the bell. I'm not, I can do that. Right, can, you'll light the candles before the mass and the wine and water. I'm going through the whole thing. I'm okay. Until Sister Nunciata hands me a, a, a booklet, and, and in this booklet was a prayer that, <laughs> for older Catholics, you'll know this, in 1969, there was actually a prayer that the altar boy had to speak with the priest in the middle of the Mass. He had to go back and forth with this prayer. The priest would say his part, altar boy says his part, right in the middle of the Mass. I'm nine. Here's the weird part. As I'm looking through the prayer, right hand to God, the prayer was in Latin. Right, I'm nine. I can barely speak English. <laughs> this is Latin. And I remember, look, how am I going to do this prayer? Because sister said you can't do it off the book. You have to memorize the prayer, Jim. I like two days to memorize this Latin prayer at nine. I'm like freaking out the whole time. I'm like, I can't, how am I going to get my quarter? How am I going to do this? You know, my life's flashing before my eyes in my whole nine years. So as everyone's leaving, you know, and, and Kenny, the all-star altar boy, walks up to me. And he says this, this is Kenny. And this is a dead-on impression of Kenny. For a few of you out there that know Kenny Oldansky, he's still my, one of my best buddies today. He actually walks up, he sounded like this at 10, and he sounds like this now in his 50s. He walked up to me and he said, Ain't Jimmy. <laughs> I'll do the prayer. You do the bell. You do the candles. I got the prayer, I got you. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Oh, this is awesome. I'm going to get my quarter. Grandma's going to think I'm going to become a priest. Everything's going to be happy. This is great. So, now, Kenny's going to do prayers. It's Sunday. Two days go by. It's time for the Mass. Grandma lived on 14th Street right next to the church, so I was able to walk over. Even nine years old, it's a nice, safe neighborhood. I walk over to the church, and everyone's going to come over. I'm going to get ready. So I'm here at like 9.30, a little early. First Mass, you know, got to loosen up. <laughs> you know, my little junior altar, you know, boy, little priest clothes there, you know, the little vestments they put on. So I'm getting the altar boy stuff on, little junior priest thing there, and ready to go. And then Sister Annunciata walks in, and I'm thinking she's going to, like, you know, wish me luck or something. And she looks at me and goes, hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, Sister, how are you? And she, I'll never forget that she looked at me and said, Jim, you heard the news, right? I go, what? She goes, Ken's sick. <laughs> My same reaction. <laughs> Air escaped. Oh no. Right at that shoes. You know, you know the prayer, right? <laughs> of course I looked at her and go, oh yeah. <laughs> I know the prayer. I lied. <laughs> to a nun. <laughs> to my first mass. I thought hey, I got confession, I'll learn that in two years, I'll catch you a chip in. <laughs> I'll cleanse my soul. I got time. I don't know the prayer. I don't know what to do. I look out, everybody's there, and the first three rows are my family. I'm telling my grandma's in the front, and mom's there, dad, uh, Uncle Ed, Uncle Yossel, everybody. They're there. I don't know the prayer, so I could do everything but that. But I'm gonna, I don't know what to do, and I don't know how I'm gonna get there. I have no idea what to do. So I go over the father, I'm ready to start the Mass, and Father Calvin goes, Jim, you know the prayer, man. I said, yes, Father. I lied twice. <laughs> now to a priest and a nun on my first Mass. Two lies. I don't know the prayer. And I don't know what to do. But I figure, I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll do something. This is exactly what happened that morning. We rang the bell, we walked out, I'm out in front of all my family beaming, grandma smiling, going, there's my priest. 
<laughs> I'm kneeling there. Father's there. Now, the Mass is about 45 minutes long, okay? But the prayer is about 20, 25 minutes in, okay? And that went by like two minutes. Because, right, I don't know the prayer. <laughs> the whole time I'm sweating profusely, you know? And I'll never forget I'm kneeling there. And it's time. Father starts his side of the prayer as I'm kneeling there. His side goes like this, as he has the, the book in front of him, the Bible's in front of him. I'm just watching a quarter float away, you know. <laughs> His hands went up, and that's exactly how he sounded. My same reaction. I'm like, he's good. I swear to God, I did this. I know Father Galwin's up in heaven laughing. Because at nine years old, kneeling there, sweating profusely in front of my grandmother, in front of everyone in the church, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to make up my own language. I looked out at everyone. I looked up at Father. And it went like this. I, took, I was taking off my junior priest clothes and I'm so happy, you know. Eddie Brewer, church manager, walks up and says, Jim, so yeah, says, father and sister want to see you. <laughs> I go, no. I'm thinking they're going to go, like, you know, there's two tickets to Magic Gallery. We need you to go. <laughs> Your first exorcism starts at two, Jim. I know you lied twice. We know it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm like, oh, here we go again, you know. He's caught me, I know, I know. And, but, you know, at least I got through the Mass. And I walked up to him and I said, Hi, Father, hi, Sister. I, I know you want to see me. And I'll never forget, Father, smile, ear to ear. And he says, Jim. Yes, he goes, Great job. And he reads his paw, David Corey. market and I got my jujubes and I got my milkas. They were the sweetest I've ever had to this day. And until this day, you know what I realized back then at that moment, that was the first time that I became one of those Pittsburgh characters that I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs>
I became a character, and I get the honor of being a character every morning on the radio. I really love it. And you know, every once in a while, I still make up my own language, as you know. 